class. So yesterday, obviously, was Martin Luther King Day. So uh, I gave you a little quote in there. It's a very, uh, it's a good quote for the timing. Um, so today we're going to complete 1.03 notes. Uh, we're going to this on Zoom. If you miss the Zoom, please watch on YouTube. Um, and then lastly, complete the SM003 post test. It's a post test, but like I said um, last week, you get um, like five attempts. It's open notes. <laughs> I don't really know if that's considered a test at that point or not. Um, so that's basically it from there. So let's go ahead and get over these notes. Um, the faster we get them done, the faster you'll be done for the day, because that's all we're doing today besides that test. Um, and you have, you know, the next couple of days to get it done if for some reason you can't get it done um, today. So um, let's go ahead and just open up this. So you need to complete these notes. Um, here's the fill in the blank ones. So you'll need to download those or however it works for you. I, I'm not worried about it at this point. However, you can look at those fill in the blanks and answer them. Um, that works for me. So let's go ahead and get started. I had to make this PowerPoint. So just uh, bear with me if there's any misspellings or, you know, I messed something up. Um, just bear with me. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you, Tyler. Um, share screen. Um, back to it. Let me get my participants over here so I have that. And the chat so I have that over here as well. Um, I'll go back real quick um, just to go back over this. Um, if you go to announcements, just again, real quick review because I wasn't sharing my screen. Going over the notes today, then you're going to take the post test. Go to modules, wherever I left them. Um, give it a second to load. Um, the test can be found in the SM003 module, and it's right here at the end. Post test, make sure you do that. Um, and then today we're going over these notes. And like I said, you might want to come here to get to fill in the blank. I'm not worried about how you fill in the blanks. If it's just a blank document with the blanks filled in, if it's a blank document, which is what the blanks were, and you list out the, the answers, at this point, I'm fine with that because it kind of is what it is. Um, so, like I said, let's go ahead and get started. This is the PowerPoint. Like I said, I made it, so if there's misspelling or something, I made it pretty quickly. So just uh, bear with me. So let's go ahead and get started. So understanding planning and organizing as a function of management. Discuss the nature of managerial planning. All right, let's get started. So here's an ethical question. So Tamara is planning for the next fiscal year and is currently trying to determine what goals she will set for her team. She knows what the higher, uh, she knows that the higher the goals, the better she will look to her supervisor if she achieves them. However, her team is already un understaffed and would struggle to reach these ambitious targets without working long hours. What should Tamara do? What do y'all think? Does anyone want to talk and uh, tell me what they would do? <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, that's great. Give me a check mark if you would set the high ambitious goals. Okay. So no one's going to set the high ambitious goals. Give me a check mark now if you would set really low goals. Give me a check mark now if you'd set medium goals. Give me a check mark if you're breathing. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Thanks. Really enjoy y'all's participation. Uh, so, in my opinion, what should, should Tamara do? She should set some medium goals that you know she knows she can accomplish. Maybe she sets, um, at least from some leadership training I've been to, uh, maybe she sets one goal that's kind of difficult to reach. Um, and then she sets some goals that she should be able to reach pretty easily. Um, or you know, with some relatively you know, hard work, she should be able to meet them. And then one low one that she knows she can crush um, easy. In my opinion, that would be the best way to um, do that because you're kind of hitting all areas. 
you know, you're hitting that small goal and knocking it out of the park. You're getting those medium goals, and those are some that you should, you hopefully can get all of them done. And then there's one big one that, you know, you hope to uh, accomplish. For FBLA, for instance, um, for those of uh, you who are in FBLA or don't know much about FBLA, um, we have a officer meeting at the beginning of the year each year, um, and we kind of almost set our goals. You know, what are we going to do? One of our main goals almost every year on a normal year is to have a social event and a charitable event every month. And if we don't have a charitable event every month, it, month, it needs to be a charitable event that lasts over a couple months. Maybe it's a donation drive or something. Um, that being said, like this year, we were really hoping if we came back, maybe to have like a charitable event, like a garden work day or helping out in our community every month while we were having maybe a donation drive every couple of months that lasted two months or so. Um, so that was some goals that we could definitely set. Um, the donation drive is an easy one to set because there's not much we have to do. We just let you know what we are getting and then someone um, will deliver those items we get um, to a charitable organization or whatever. So that's, you know, that's an easy one, but doing a, you know, an out in the community work day every month, that one's tough. That one's on us to make sure we go and we, you know, get those things going. Um, so that one's, that one's more of the challenging goal. Charitable uh, or doing a social event every month, that's not that hard either because, I mean, for the most part, we can do a tailgate for a football game and that's pretty simple. We can do a, um, a like, event out at Boyd Lee. Um, you know, and there are some more challenging events. And then when it comes to the competitive events, we have chapter events we compete in, and those are some of our big goals we have to try to um, take on. We've got one this year that no one hardly ever competes in, so it's kind of of a middle ground one. You know, we just have to, you know, compete in it, and we probably will do well. Um, and we've got some that everyone in the state competes in, so those are our big ones. So, again, we set those goals, and you have a few from each category, you know, easy, middle ground, and hard. Um, and if you achieve your easy and middle ground ones, you feel pretty successful. And if you complete one of the hard ones, then you really did a good job. So that's just some ethical discussion we um, can talk about further if anyone would like to unmute. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next um, section. So defining planning. So planning is very important for any organization or business. So of the five management functions, planning, organiz organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling, planning is the most fundamental. All other functions stem from planning. However, planning doesn't always get the attention that it deserves. When does many, uh, when does many managers discover that the planning process isn't as easy as they thought it would be, or that even the best laid plans can go um, ar ar awry? Geez, I couldn't say that for a minute. Um, so before a manager can tackle any of the other functions, he or she must first devise a plan. A plan is a blueprint for goal achievement that specifies the necessary resource uh, allocations, schedules, tasks, and other actions. A goal is a desired uh, future state that the organization attempts to realize. I think we all know what goals are. Um, so there's a good quote from Leslie Note from Parks and Rec, if you ever watched that. I'm a big office guy. Um, I also like Parks and Rec, so I got some quotes from that. Um, so the word planning incorporates both ideas. Um, it means determining an organization's goals and defining the means for achieving them. Um, in short, planning is uh, preparing for tomorrow. Um, today, it's the active, it's the activity that allows managers to determine what they want and how they will achieve it. So again, um, basically simple stuff. You know, you're just planning. You're talking. We're talking about planning and how important it is to plan. Um, right here on, on my desk, I have a plan of things I need to get done this week. Um, and I, thankfully, I've already crossed one thing off. So, and I'm. Wait a minute. I think I can cross off another one. I did grade stuff today, and you can check your grades now because I have updated grades. Um, so there you go. Um, so let's keep moving. Planning questions. This is very important as well, and you're going to have an activity that goes along with this later in the week. So not only does planning provide directions um, and a unity of purpose for organizations, it also answers six basic questions in regards to any activity. What needs to be uh, what needs to be accomplished? What when is the deadline? Where will it be done? Who will be responsible for it? And how will it get done? How much time, energy, and resources are required to accomplish this goal? So again, if I go back to just my FBLA example, um, for instance. Um, 
when we did the crime prevention plan and we've worked really hard on that and we're, we're coming towards its end, um, we decided who would be in charge of that. And basically we have officers who are in charge of different events, but you know, maybe someone actually wants to take lead and, and do one of these chapter events there on their own. Um, so somebody you know, came forward and they really are working hard on it and hopefully they will um, you know, place from it and we'll come in first place for it. If not, at the end of the day, the main thing is we did a very good um, crime prevention plan that brought awareness about human trafficking. And I think it's very important. So for that example of that project we did, um, what needs to be accomplished? Well, we want to accomplish no matter what happens. You know, we, we want to make sure that there's awareness now about human trafficking, that people understand that it happens. And it's a lot of times, for instance, something we didn't even know was it's people you know um, that are, um, when, when people are human trafficked, for instance, it is people they know who uh, get them involved in it. Um, and it's very sad. But what we accomplished was we learned about that and we hope to you know, accomplish that other people learn about this and understand how it all goes down. Um, when is the deadline? Well, the project is due um, February 1st, for instance. But for us, you know, um, the deadline, maybe we continue working on this because it is for a good cause. Uh, where will this be done? So we did it around Pitt County. We put up posters. We made a commercial that went on WITN. It was a PSA. Um, and that that's kind of um, the area that we were looking to impact. Who will be responsible for? Again, uh, we had one student mainly in charge of it, but then we had a couple more students come in and really work on the PSA, for instance. So, And then it was up to me as their advisor to get up with these people from WITN, uh, to reach out and find someone to help us with this. And we found a really great organization that's helped us with it. Um, and then how will it get done? Well, you know, we've we laid out different things we were going to do and when we would get them done. And that's how we get them done. And then how much time, energy and resources? Well, technically, there's really no resources required besides, um, you know, the equipment we use to film the PSA, uh, the ability for us to go out and put posters up, things like that. And that's the time and energy. So not to drag on to it too long. I'm trying not to talk too much about each slide, but I did want to make sure you understood these questions and going through them at the beginning of a planning stage is very important. Um, I'm just going to read through these. I'm not going to read every single one word for word because that would take forever. But advantages of planning are numerous. Planning fulfills the following objectives. It gives an organization sense of direction, focuses attention on objectives and results, establishes a basis for teamwork, helps anticipate problems and cope with change, provides guidelines for decision making, and then uh, serves as a prerequisite to employing all other management functions. So again, you're just kind of going through these things and uh, it, it's checking off a lot of things you want to get done in your business. Again, it's going to help teamwork. It's going to help set that precedent for employing uh, future um, workers at your business or organization. So tons of things like that. And it's very important um, that you achieve all those things. Using plans to achieve goals. As we talked about, plans are going to help you achieve goals. Uh, planning is a crucial activity for the design of the map of the lays that lays the groundwork for other functions. The plan itself specifies that should be done by whom, when, where, and how. And we've kind of gone over this, so I'm not going to uh, beat it to death. So again, this plan is going to help us achieve the goal. Um, as a teacher, I have a um, PDP, a professional development plan. I have to basically put out a plan that what am I going to do for the year? Um, what things am I going to accomplish? And those are goals basically I'm setting, but how am I going to achieve them as part of what I have to answer? And usually my answer is through uh, different forms of testing. It may be through different ways of learning. You know, am I doing visual learning, auditory learning, um, hands-on work, things like that. And that is how I'm achieving my goals. Um, and that's the plan. Uh, to make sure that goal setting benefits the organization, managers must adopt certain characteristics and guidelines. The following describes these criteria. So goals must be specific and measurable. Goals should cover key result areas. Goals should be challenging, but not too difficult. Goals should specify the time period other, over which they will be achieved. And goals should be linked to rewards. So um, again, like I said at the beginning of class with Tamara and her ethical decision, um, goals basically should be challenging, but not too difficult. You need to make sure that you can reach your goals. If you're put, putting forth goals that you can't reach, then what's the point of um, even doing that? And again, you're looking for those key results. Again, with our um, crime prevention thing, our key result, you know, what we really hope for is two things. On a self level, it, within our 
FBLA, we hope we win first place in the crime prevention project. But on a bigger scale and a much more important scale, in my opinion, is are we actually making a difference in our community? Um, and that's what we're hoping to do. All the different levels of management should have plans that work together to accomplish organization's purpose. The plans of the top, middle, and first level managers of an organization should work together to achieve the main goal. <laughs> In one second, I need a little bit of water. I know this is going to be kind of a draggy day. I always had a hard time paying attention to lectures that were on Zoom or, well, I never used Zoom, but anything recorded, I know it's hard. Anything that's, you know, you're not in the class, you're not seeing me, it's much more difficult. Um, so just try to bear with me. I know it's hard. Um, so, but I just wanted to say that real quick before we got back. All right, all managers plan basically the same way, but the kinds of plans they develop and the amount of time they spend on planning vary. Here are some examples. Top level managers are con concerned with long time periods and with plans for larger organization units. Their planning includes developing the mission for the organization units, the organizational objectives, and the major policy area. These goals are called the strategic goals or objectives. Middle level managers planning responsibilities center on translating broad objectives of top level management into more specific goals for work units. These goals are called tact, uh, tactical goals or objectives. First level managers are involved in day-to-day -day plans such as scheduling work hours, deciding what work will be done and by whom, and developing structures to reach, uh, reach these goals. These goals are called operational goals or objectives. So let's say, let's go back to our Taco Bell um, example. So the head of Taco Bell wants to make sure that customers are satisfied. That's going to be his main thing. Um, so the, and that's all. That's that's all he's giving the middle level manager. Um, the middle level manager has to find out a way to figure out, you know, are customers satisfied? Um, so maybe they're going to have some kind of surveys towards the end of the year um, that, you know, a customer, you know, you get those surveys that, uh, you know, when you get your receipt, if you fill out the survey, you'll get a free drink, you'll get a free side item, you'll get a free beverage or so, just something like that. So maybe that's what they do. They, you know, they do the survey to receipt business and the first level manager gets that information. And now it's their job for the next, for the rest of the year to make sure that customers are being satisfied when they come. Because most of the time, um, I'm sure within a year, y'all go to the same kind of fast food restaurants. It, let's say y'all go to fast food restaurants. I'm sure you go to the same ones kind of on a regular basis for the most part. There's something that you're, you know, um, your place. Put in the chat where your, your favorite fast food place is, just so I can see that you're alive. Oh, there we go. Chipotle. Okay. So Tyler, you visit Chipotle a lot, I would imagine. Cool. Thank y'all. Thank you for actually responding to me. Yeah. So Tyler said, yeah. So I'm sure at a point, you know, you could probably fill out a survey pretty accurately of your, your service there. And I'm assuming if you keep going, you're going to give them pretty good notes, but the, you know, they probably will run into some people who don't come all the time. So that's kind of the hope. Um, but you know, you get that survey and you know, how was your service, all that stuff. And that's how you might would be able to find out how, um, how your employees are doing um, at each individual Taco Bell. And then that middle level manager will send that up to the top level manager and say, hey, this is you know my survey I did and this is what we got back and this is our feedback. So 1.03 notes are unpublished. Uh-oh. Why didn't y'all say anything earlier? I don't understand y'all. Like y'all just don't talk. It's published here. Oh, it was 1.03 not published? Come on, load in. Ah, oh, it's not published. Why didn't y'all say anything? Okay, I'm just going to have to keep going because I'm not going back through all of that again. So y'all are just going to have to go back for the first 10, 11 slides and find what you were missing. I'm sorry. Y'all should have said something a little earlier than, than now. Thank you, Jonathan, for saying something. Though. Come on, guys. Okay, let's move forward. 
All right, planning functions of management involves the following steps. So establishment of objectives. So you got to have objectives. You got to have things that you're going to get done. Planning requires systematic approach. Planning starts with setting goals and objectives to be achieved. Objectives provide a rational for a rationale for undertaking various activities. Um, and we'll, there's tons more that go over this, but I'm just going to keep moving. I'm not going to read all the points. Um, establishment of planning premises. So basically, you know, what goes on with this plan? Um, let's set some parameters so we're not just all over the place because um, it won't be very successful if you're kind of like in different, you know, areas trying to plan out. So choice of alternative course of action. So when forecasts are available and prim uh, premises are established, several alternative courses of action have to be considered. Uh, for the purpose, each alternative will be evaluated by weighing its pros and cons in the light of resources available and requirements of the organization. So, you know, what are some other ways we can, we can establish this plan? Formulation of derivative plans. So derivative plans are the sub plans or secondary plans which help the achievement of main plans. So this is your plan B, plan C. Um, what happens if this fails? What are we gonna do? Securing cooperation. So after the plans have been determined, it is necessary rather to, uh, rather advisable to take sub uh, subordinates or those who must implement these plans into confidence. Uh, these purpose, uh, the purpose behind taking them into confidence are uh, subordinates may feel motivated since they are involved in the decision making process. The organization may be able to, uh, to get valuable suggestions and important information um, in formulation as well as um, implementation of plans. Also, the employees will be more interested in the execution of these plans. Follow up and appraisal of plans. So after choosing a course of action, it, um, it is put into action. After the selected plan is implemented, it is important to appraise it, uh, its effectiveness. This is done uh, based on feedback or information received from departments or persons concerned. So basically, you know, um, is the plan working? Then you need to identify barriers. This is also a very important part of the planning. You know, what could get in our way? If our plan is the receipt um, survey business, what could get in our way of that? Um, would it be that the receipt machine stops working? How many times have y'all been somewhere and, you know, sorry, we can't give you a receipt? Um, stuff like that happens. Um, and if that happens, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and you have to identify some ways around that. You know, maybe it's online. You just send surveys with people. Um, it, and there's tons of different ways to get around it, but you have to identify those barriers to make sure you know how to make those plan B's and plan C's that we talked about earlier. All right, um, company priorities uh, and the planning process. In most companies, the priority is generating revenue and the priority can sometimes interfere uh, with the planning process of any project. For example, if you are in the process of planning a large expansion project and your largest customer suddenly threatens to take their business to your competitor, then you might have to shelve the expansion planning until the customer issue is resolved. Um, again, very simple. You know, you got to have money to make money. And it's always important to expand. But if for some reason something happens while you're trying to expand, for instance, a pandemic, uh, you may need to shelf that expansion. Um, I'm sure y'all know of, uh, what is it? Air you and then now saw your spun part. Um, they are obviously kind of in a mess right now from what I've heard. I don't know them very well. And y'all might know people who know them better than I do or maybe related to people, I don't know. But um, I did hear things like, you know, and it did suck for them because, I mean, no one could have guessed a pandemic was going to happen. They started expanding, and as soon as they start expanding, um, the pandemic happens, and not many people can come to their um, to their facilities. So that causes an issue. Um, if you were a company like AirU, and let's say you hadn't started the expansion process, um, and the pandemic comes up, you might say, well, we need to probably chill and make sure we can survive this before we start spending a whole lot of money. Um, so evaluation of company resources, having an idea of developing a plan for your company can help your company to grow and succeed. But if the company does not have the resources to make the plan come together, it can stall progress. One of the first steps of any planning process should be evaluation of the resources necessary to complete the project. Again, if you don't have the money to expand, you probably don't need to expand. Um, you just need to stay where you're at and see if you can, you know, gain more revenue and then talk about expanding. Um, for instance, if you own a, you know, a small little restaurant, 
you, you want to have a couple more in Greenville and maybe expand out into Washington or Aden or somewhere, you know, throughout Pitt County, you probably need to make sure that you can afford to do that. Um, but that's just important. I know, for instance, Marabella tried to have, let's see, they have their location in Washington, which has Beaufort County, but, and then they have their location in, you know, that's right on um, Greenville Boulevard. And then they used to have a location right near Best Buy and that closed. Um, and I'm not really sure the odds and ends of how that all worked out, but, um, but now they've opened another one now in Winterville. Um, and maybe the thought process is you have one in Winterville, you have one in Greenville, you have one in Washington. Um, and you don't have two right kind of somewhat near each other in Greenville. They both were near Greenville Boulevard. So um, that may be some of the reasoning behind it. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to expand farther in Winterville and that's why they closed the other one. There's tons of thought process that could go on. So the common barriers that inhibit, that inhibit successful planning are, follows, um, are as follows. Um, inability of plan, inadequate planning, a lack of co commitment to the planning process, uh, inferior information, focusing on the present at the expense of the future, too much reliance on the organization's planning department, and then concentrating on controllable variables. So you can get too focused on some things and that can really cause your planning to um, um, kind of struggle. So, but anyway, we'll keep moving. Major types of plans. So the three major types of plans can help managers achieve their organizational goals. Uh, strategic, tactical, and operational. Uh, operational plans lead to achievement of tactical plans, which in turn leads to the attainment of strategic plans. In addition to three, these three types of plans, managers should also develop a contingency plan in case their original plan fails. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I don't know if y'all could hear it. was very light in the distance. Um, operational plans. So the specific result is, um, is expected departments, work groups, and individuals are the operational goals. These goals are um, precise and measurable. Process 150 sales applications each week or publish 20 books this quarter are examples of operational goals. Um, an operational plan is one that managers use to accomplish his or her job responsibilities. Supervisors, team leaders, and facilitators develop operational plans to support tactical plans. See the next section. Operational plans can be single, um, single use plan or an ongoing plan. Um, so single use plan, um, so it's just a one-time occurrence. Uh, then there's continuing or ongoing plans. These, you know, keep going. And then you can read out all this other information, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Tactical plan. So a tactical plan is concerned with the lower level unit within each division must do, how they must do it, and who is in charge at each level. Tactical uh, tactics are the means of needed, excuse me, tactics are the means needed to activate a strategy and make it work. Tactical plans are concerned with shorter time frames and narrower scopes uh, than the strategic plans. These plans usually span one year or less because they are considered short-term goals. Long-term goals, on the other hand, can take several years or more to accomplish. Normally, it is the middle manager's responsibility to take broad strategic plans and identify specific tactical actions. Lastly, we have strategic plan, or excuse me, we were on, we were just on strategic, we're going to tactical. No, why did it go in out of order? That's so weird. So that was, we went over operational, we went over uh, tactical plans, and now we're going to strategic, and lastly, we'll have contingency plans. So strategic plans. A strategic plan is an outline of steps designed with the goals of the entire organization in mind, rather than with the goals of a specific division or department. Strategic planning begins with the organization's mission. Strategic plans look ahead over the next two, three, five, or even more years to move the organization from where it currently is to where it wants to be. Requ requiring multi-level involvement, these plans demand harmony among all levels of management within the organization. Top-level managers develops the directional objectives for the entire organization, while lower-level levels of management develop uh, compatible objectives and plans to achieve them. Top managers' strategic plan for the entire organization becomes the framework and sets dimensions uh, for the lower-level planning. Lastly is your contingency plan. Intelligent and successful management depends upon a, a constant pursuit of adaptation, flexibility, and mastery of changing conditions. Strong management requires keeping all options open. 
approach at all times. That's where contingency planning comes in. Contingency planning involves identifying alternative courses of action that can be implemented uh, if and when the original plan proves inadequate because of changing circumstances. Keep in mind that uh, events beyond a manager's control may cause even the most carefully prepared and alternative future scenarios to go uh, awry. Unexpected problems and events frequently occur when they do. Managers may need to change their plans. Um, anticipating change during planning process is best in case things don't go as expected. Managers can then develop alternatives to existing plans uh, to exist existing plan and ready them for the use and if circumstances make these alternatives appropriate. So basically, you know, like I said, um, the pandemic is a good example. A lot of small businesses who own, you know, restaurants and things like that. Um, so again, like I said, um, these restaurants during the pandemic, they started eating outside. They started social distancing. They started, you know, putting people farther apart in the restaurant. They weren't serving as many people, but hey, they're still serving people. Um, and that's part of what they're doing. Now, this is getting more difficult, obviously, with it being wintertime. Uh, it was easy during the spring and summer to do this and even in the fall. But now with it being winter, um, and even here, it's not as bad, you know, on a good day, if it's not windy, it might be 50 something degrees on a, on a Saturday in the middle of the day, and you might can get some more customers in. The problem is, you know, especially up north, um, where it could be, you know, 20 degrees, no one wants to sit outside and eat food um, somewhere where it's that cold. So they have to find new ways to, um, you know, maybe make indoor slash outdoor seating so it's a little bit more open. Um, so those are some of the ways they get through that. Um, a good contingency plan right here in Pitt County Schools is trying to get everyone a Chromebook, for instance. Um, as much as I hate them, it is what it is, and at least y'all have a device um, that you can use if you didn't have one at home. Because not every family has a Chromebook, and you know, if you're a, you know, I didn't have a laptop until I went to college because there was no need for one. We went to school, and you have a computer if you need it. Um, but now, obviously, that's not the case. So um, those are just contingency plans to think about. Um, make sure you've completed these notes because um, that is the end of them. I can click on it the end, as you can see. So um, that being said, make sure um, you've filled in the blanks and you've gotten that done. And other than that, the only other thing you have to do today is this post test from the last section, which is right here. And it shouldn't be too hard. So um, other than that, that's it for me today. Y'all are welcome to stay on, but you do have to take that test. Um, but yeah, I'm done for the day. So you're welcome to get off. Um, let me go ahead and stop my recording.